Welcome to HVAC exam practice test. Our topic today is heat pump installation. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. What is true about the power supply to the outdoor unit? A. It should be provided by an existing line to the section. B. It should be on the same power supply as the indoor unit. C. It should be an independent circuit from the existing fuse or circuit breaker panel. D. It should be provided according to only the manufacturer's installation standards, regardless of local codes. The answer is C. It should be an independent circuit from the existing fuse or circuit breaker panel. Explanation. Manufacturers and codes state that an independent circuit from the structure's main circuit panel must be provided to the unit with an additional disconnect next to the unit. Number 2. A heat pump outdoor system is being installed in a location that experiences large amount of rainfall with possible flooding. Which of the following would be the best choice for mounting the outdoor unit? A. On a bed of gravel extending one foot from the unit. B. On a prefabricated plastic pad just below flood stage. C. Directly on the concrete pad just below flood stage. D. On a construction framework above the flood stage. The answer is D on a construction framework above the flood stage. Explanation. In many low-lying areas, it is recommended that the unit be mounted on a framework above the flood stage, such as wooden platform, metal cradle, cinder blocks and pad. Number 3. Which of the following methods would be used to remove condensate from the indoor unit located inside a basement below grade of an existing structure? A. If the basement is unfinished, install a floor drain. B. Pipe the condensate outside of the structure and allow gravity to do the rest. C. Utilize a condensate pump. D. Both A and B are correct. The answer is C. Utilize a condensate pump. Explanation. It is recommended that a condensate pump be used. Number 4. Good field practice requires insulating the condensate line for at least the first how many feet of the run from the indoor unit installed in a hot attic? A. 5. B. 10. C. 15. D. 20. The answer is B. 10. Explanation. Many southern codes state that the condensate line must be insulated for the first 10 feet to prevent sweating, which could create a moisture problem. Number 5. A return grill, not using restrictive filters, should be sized to provide a minimum of how many unrestricted square inches per ton of capacity? A. 60. B. 120. C. 144. D. 180. The answer is C. 144. Explanation. It is recommended that return grills have a minimum of 144 unrestricted square inches per ton of capacity. Number 6. How should be the vapor line on split system heat pumps between the outdoor and indoor units? A. It should be uninsulated. B. It should be insulated with 1 4th inch Armaflex or Rubbertex. C. It should be insulated with 3 8 inch Armaflex or Rubbertex. D. It should be insulated with a half inch Armaflex or Rubbertex. The answer is D. It should be insulated with a half inch Armaflex or Rubbertex. Explanation. Manufacturers recommend a minimum of a half insulation be used on the vapor line, which is the suction line in cooling, and the hot gas line in heating. Number 7. What is the primary purpose of the X-Bend in a large rectangle duct? A. To reduce noise from the metal flexing. B. To indicate the side of the duct. C. To make the airflow pattern steady. D. To indicate the top and bottom of the duct.
The answer is A. To reduce noise from the metal flexing. Explanation. Sheet metal can produce irritating noises without the X bend. Cross breaks are most common in an X shape, forming a slight pyramid shape in the metal without overly distorting it. The crossing ridges stiffen the face of the metal and help prevent it from buckling under a load. Cross breaks are often incorporated on machine enclosures and duct work, where the added rigidity reduces noise from vibration or airflow. The main advantage of the cross brake is that it allows designers to use thinner gauges, thus saving money, without compromising the strength. Number 8. To maintain efficiency, what type of control is wired in the system to prevent the auxiliary heat from coming on until needed? A. A bypass electric heat relay. B. A 15-minute time delay on the second stage. C. An outdoor thermostat set above the balance point. D. An outdoor thermostat set below the balance point. The answer is C. An outdoor thermostat set above the balance point. Explanation. Outdoor thermostats are used to control the auxiliary heat from coming on too early. There are situations that could cause the auxiliary heat to come on prematurely, such as having the heat off all day, where the temperature is well below the thermostat set point, but the outdoor temperature is such that the heat pump itself could supply the heat needed without addition auxiliary heat. Number 9. What should be used to light an acetylene torch? A. A cigarette lighter. B. A book of matches. C. Stick matches only. D. A striker. The answer is D. A striker. Explanation. OSHA proclaims that a striker is the only safe lighting device for acetylene torches. Propane lighters used for lighting cigarettes are considered very hazardous and can explode. Matches may put fingers in jeopardy due to close proximity of intense heat. Number 10. What does the O or B low voltage terminal on a conventional heat pump thermostat control? A. Compressor contactor. B. Indoor fan. C. Heating anticipator. D. Reversing valve. The answer is D. Reversing valve. Explanation. Wires connecting to the O, B, or OB terminals on your thermostat for a heat pump relate to the reversing valve that controls the flow of refrigerant in both heating and cooling operations. The O wire reverses the valve from heating to cooling, and the B wire switches the valve from cooling to heating. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.